Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Jesus. Saints, please stand. Can the saints please stand? Hallelujah. 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 You're ready, son. You're ready. You are ready. You're ready for this task. You are ready, son. You are ready. Praise Lord Jesus. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus?
Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. By all means, regarding or amidst our situation, we must find back or we must stay at the place of worship. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Whatsoever our situation is, whatsoever our case may be, we must stay or we must find back the place of worship. Thank you, Jesus. Praise God. When the music fades and all is swept away and I simply come longing just to bring something that's of worth that will bless your heart. Hallelujah. I'll bring you more than a song. Oh, For a song in itself is not what you have required. You search much deeper within to the way things appear. You're looking into my heart I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you it's all about you Jesus I'm sorry Lord for the thing I made it when it's all about you when it's all about you, Jesus, I'm coming back to a part of worship. When it's all about you, when it's all about you, Jesus, I'm sorry, Lord, for nothing I've been in. When it's all about you. And it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. When it's all about you, it's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry, Lord, for the thing I made. It. And it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. Let the church say, It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 
it's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Thank you, Jesus. It's all about you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's all Glory. about you. Thank you, Jesus. I'm coming back to the heart of worship. It's all about you. Jesus, it's all about you. All about you. Lord Jesus Christ, when everything is going wrong. All about and must you, be at the heart of Jesus. worship. For it's all about it's you, all Jesus. About you. This morning it's all about it's you. All about it's you. all about you, Jesus. It's not about it's us. All about you. But you must be first in my life. It's I come today you. to worship you. It's to praise and you. adore you. It is not about me. But it's all about you. The church is all about you, Jesus. It's never about the pastor. It's never about the minister. It's never about the preacher. But it's all about you, Jesus. Be with us today, Jesus. Tabernacle among us today, Jesus. For it would be vain, Lord Jesus Christ, for us to be here. And you are not it's here with us. You. For it's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. It's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. 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 The church is all about you. Was to find at the heart of worship. All about you, Jesus. And as for those who are dear, help us to remain where the heart of worship is. All about you. It's all about you, Jesus. It's all about you. Praise the name of Jesus. Praise the name of Jesus. It's all about you, Jesus. Jesus, it's all about you. Thank you, Jesus. Turn your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 9. It's all about you, Jesus. It's not about me, Jesus. Us being here, oh Father, it's not about us. But it's about you, Jesus. As we read Hebrews chapter 9 verse 1 And verily the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary for there was a tabernacle made the first wherein was the candlestick and the table and the shewbread which is called the sanctuary and after the second veil the tabernacle which is called the holiest of all and which had the golden censer and the ark of the covenant overlaid round about with gold wherein was the golden pot that had manna and Aaron's rod that were budded and the table of the covenant and over it the cherubims of glory shadowing the mercy seat of which we cannot now speak particularly. Shall we bless the Lord? This is the word of the Lord Jesus. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Concerning Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9 would have made mention of the sanctuary. Both the old testament sanctuary it speaks of the different veils and the different portals of worship so you have what is called the tabernacle uh, the tabernacle is referred to as a dwelling place when the children of israel was sojourning through the wilderness 
They have various parts where they went through. The Bible has tell us that they went through Rephidim. And at a time they went through um, Mara. At a time they went through the wilderness of sin. And at one point it also tell you that it went, they went through the wilderness of Sinai. And so on. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. But while they were there traveling and sojourning. After they were held captive in Egypt. And after God had delivered them. Brought them forth with his mighty hand. And outstretched arm. God desired for his people to be at liberty. Because he knew that if the people will be at liberty. They will be now at a better place of worship. Therefore God commanded Moses. And Moses spoke unto Aaron. God said. Moses command the people to build a sanctuary unto me. Or a tabernacle. So that I may dwell among you. Because we know as it was in times before. Going back to our first father Adam. That God dwelt among his creation. And how he would come down into the cool of the day. God desire for man is worship. God desire for man is that he would want to have fellowship with man. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. For what is a man when he bring forth or when he procreates. And when he goes unto a woman and they... Both make a child. A good father, a real father would want to be among his child or his children. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. And God is that good father. In fact, the Bible speaks of him being the good shepherd. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So he wanted always to be among his creation. And we have seen it where because of circumstances and an uprising situation that God was not able to dwell among man as how he would want to. God was not able to fellowship with man as the way as he ought to. Because sin has now came into the picture. And because God had now departed from man. And cast out Adam out of the garden. You know man begins to do their own thing. So coming back to my point of the wilderness experience. It is that God... And now speak unto Moses and said, Build unto me that tabernacle that I may once dwell among my people. And we have already said that the tabernacle is a, is a dwelling place. A dwelling place for the Holy Spirit himself. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So what you will find in the tabernacle, you have different sections of the tabernacle. The outer court. The inner court. And you have the holy place. And you have the holiest of all. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Among now the children of Israel. They celebrated while they were in the wilderness. The Hebrew people or the Israelites would call it the Yom Kippur. It is simple to say that this is called the day of atonement. It is now... It was recognized as the most holiest day in the calendar. Because this would be the day when the priest would go into the holy place. And he would offer up sacrifices. And he would sprinkle the blood in the holy place for atoning the sin of Israel. Praise God. But in the holy place there was something that was called the Ark of the Covenant. The Ark of the Covenant was this. It was an ark. Put it in a simple place. It was a ark. A rectangular box. You know with two stars as the Bible would have told us about it. And upon this ark. It would have cherubims. Two angels to each end. Inside the ark would have contained the two tablets. Which had the ten commandments written upon it. And Heron's rod. 
but outside of the the ark up on top it was a lid called the mercy seat and this is where I would want to speak to the church concerning the mercy seat so there was a lid called the mercy seat on which rested a cloud or the visible symbol of the divine presence of God here God was supposed to be seated and from this he was supposed to dispense mercy upon men when the blood was sprinkled upon the mercy seat and in the holy place praise the name of Jesus Christ but now consider the mercy seat the Greek word for mercy seat is where we got the word Elasterian. It means that which make it expiation. Or the Bible term in the New Testament, you would have call it the propitiation. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. That if we would turn our Bibles onto the book of Romans, Romans 3 25, it would have tell us about the propitiation. And it says, whom God had set forth to be the propitiation to the faith in his blood, do declare his righteousness for the remission of sins that are past due to the forbearance of God. Propitiation, it means it is the act of appeasing, thus incurring the divine favor or avoiding divine retribution. Man deserved retribution. Man deserved judgment. Man deserved chastisement. But therefore God was so compassionate unto man. God was so loving towards man. God was so caring. And he had this bowel of mercy towards man. That upon establishing the ark, it didn't leave out the mercy seat. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ? And the mercy seat, I give God thanks for the mercy seat. For even though I would have faltered, and even though I would have failed, the mercy seat of God is still in commission. The mercy seat of God. Is still working. The mercy seat of God wasn't removed or replaced. So I must give God thanks for that which is called the mercy seat, where God would dispense mercy upon man. But no one's touching the new covenant. There was no longer a physical mercy seat. But Jesus paid it all. And all to him I hold. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ. So that when I'm falling to condemnation. I know when I'm the talk of the town. Or when the church kick me out. I give God thanks that his mercy seat is still available unto me. John says. If you would but acknowledge your sin he is faithful. And just enough to forgive you. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ? Let me take it a step at a time. The mercy seat. The propitiation of our sin. Because the worst thing that man has ever experienced is not cancer. Is not HIV. It is not the gun. It is not the corona. It is not the nuclear weapons. It is not a missile. But the wickedest thing that a man has ever experienced in this life is sin. Because it is true, the birth of sin comes forth sickness. So if you should ask me, sin is worse than cancer. Because sin is what birth cancer. 
If you should ask me if a gunman is worse than cancer, I would tell you no. Because it is a sin that birthed a gunman. If you should ask me if an atomic weapon is more deadlier than sin, I would tell you, as explosive as that atomic weapon would be, that if one of that should drop and hit our island Jamaica, it would have wiped out Jamaica, I would still tell you that sin is more deadly than that. The mercy seat. The mercy seat. So now we have found it where sin has been a trouble unto us. And because of sin, it birthed different situations in our lives. But let me fast forward and then reverse back a little bit. If Jesus brings forth a vaccination for sin I want to tell you that he has healed the whole human race I have had conversation even with some of my customers you know one in particular tell me that he left and he went to America to get his vaccination his COVID vaccine and he's supposed to go away sometime soon to get the second dose I spoke to one of my customers again and he told me that he went and he got his vaccination. And he's awaiting his second dose. But there is a sickness that has been plaguing the whole human race. And spiritually it has placed us in a pandemic also. But therefore, while it is that people run for the vaccine, nobody wants to run to the mercy seat of Jesus. Nobody wants to get vaccinated for sin. Some people say they're not taking the vaccine because they don't trust it. So what to Jesus? Why you not take Jesus? You don't want the vaccine and you don't want Jesus. What you want? Make up your mind, man. What you want? You don't want a temporal vaccine to, 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 to heal the natural body. And you don't want the eternal vaccine either. What do you want? Make up your mind what you want, man. Make up your mind. Make up your mind what you want. The mercy seat is still available. The mercy seat is still in commission. The mercy seat is still working. Make up your mind what you want. For we are now, since the day of Adam, we have been in a pandemic. Believe it or not. And this pandemic also causes us to, God says, because God is the health minister. He is the best health minister. This ministry is bigger than the WOH or WHO. The World Health Organization. He is the E-H-O. He is the eternal health organizer. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? So our health minister he also suggests to us wear your mask too. He also tells us social distance too. He also tells you to stay in a specific place too. So you find it that some people don't want to stay home when that health minister talk. But when our health minister tells us to stay in the church, we better stay in the church. Because this virus is very contagious. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? 
the mercy seat the mercy seat so sin is something it birthed sickness it birthed violence it birthed hatred it birthed so many things just this one thing sin praise God but my mind went back onto David as he would have penned the psalm in Psalm 137 he said by the rivers of Babylon where there we sat down he said yeah we wept when we remember Zion for there they that we they carried us away captive and required of us a song and they that wasted us required of us mirth saying sing us the song of Zion but David said how oh, shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land I don't know this place in order for me to sing a song to you take me back to that place Jerusalem because according to that dispensation before Jesus came and changed it when Jesus went unto the well the woman said unto Jesus you know you said that Jerusalem is the place where you are to worship praise the name of Jesus Christ so when I look back at it I can say that David yes he was correct because Jerusalem was a place where they are to worship and he doesn't know this place so how can you require of me a song how can I worship God in a strange place I don't know this place so therefore I can't worship God in an area or in an atmosphere of which I'm not acquainted I'm not acquainted in this environment nor this area so how can I then worship glory by the rivers of Babylon we sat down we wept when we remember the holy land the place where we are to worship the place where my heart of worship is how can you require of me a song when I don't know this place take me out of Babylon I can't sing in Babylon Jesus take me out of Babylon this place is strange this place is not home I don't know this place. Take me back home and I sing all you want me to sing. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? Glory, glory, glory. Glory. But then we have the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul experienced, as he would say, two members. It was warring or tussling in his bomb in his bodies or in his members. The apostle Paul says, according to Romans 7, verse 21, I find there a law. Praise God. When I would do good, evil is present with me. For I delight in the law of God after the inward man. But I see another. In my members, warring against the law of my mind and bringing me into captivity and bringing me where into captivity to the law of sin which is in my members. Oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from this body of death? So we have David experiencing being out of his land and he couldn't find it in his heart to worship he was correct according to his dispensation that he wouldn't be comfortable worshiping outside of Jerusalem especially when he's in captivity and they would have found it Paul on the other hand he was also see it as he was in captivity in his mind because there was two law working in his members 
So therefore he says, O wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the death of this body? I want to bring to the church, it is that at the mercy seat of God, that whatsoever condition you may find yourself in, that whatsoever state that you may find yourself in, that's whatever area or circumstances or atmosphere that you may find yourself in. I want to tell you that Paul, he found himself in a wretched place. But I want to tell the church, whatsoever wretched place you may find yourself in, you can worship because the mercy seat is available. You see, sometimes when I read the Bible, it's so different from how people react. Because God in all his, of his mercy, he made a way for us. The way of escape. He have given unto the children of Israel a mercy seat upon the ark of the covenant which contains the glory of God. And now Christ has come and he has established and he has renewed a better mercy seat because his own blood was shed. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. So, whatever state the believer would in, and whatever state that we'll find ourselves, I want to tell us that we are inexcusable Amen. if we flee from the heart of worship. Amen. Because Jesus has gone the extra mile for us so that we can worship him. Amen. And sometimes you have understand, are you that try to wonder? Why is it that sometimes some churches get it so wrong? So that if a brother steal or if him tell a lie, it may not have to be his lifestyle. But he made a mistake. And the church do find out they're ready to ridicule him and put him on the back bench. Did you forget about the mercy seat? Wasn't it for this reason? That God established a mercy seat. So that if you find a brother outside the church. Doing something that he's not supposed to be doing. You make him a public example. Forgetting about the mercy seat. We write off our own people. Forgetting about the mercy seat of Christ. Yes, sir. We destroy our own people. Yes. Forgetting that there is a mercy seat. Because if the person went out to steal. Remember because you have received mercy already. You were even worse than that. But he just did it one time. What am I saying? Is it that. I am hugging up the persons that are made the mistake. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? But sometimes we do write them off. Or sometimes we do nail them on the cross. But be careful who you nail on the cross. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ? For in doing so, you despise the works of God. And you are seen now as the enemy of the cross because you put other persons on it. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ? Paul said, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of death? Whatsoever state that you find yourself in, it may not be the place we are acquainted to. It may not be the place where you call home. It may not be your comfort zone. But whatsoever state that you find yourself into, the heart of worship, you, will, you shall never depart from it. Because the mercy seat still works. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ? Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? As my mind went back even to the woman with the issue of blood. She wasn't at home. Mentally. She wasn't in. 
such a place where she was comfortable. She was in a strange place. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. I heard someone call her a very rich woman. Because she had been visiting the doctors for 12 years. The woman had an issue of blood. Visiting the doctor for 12 years. And if you should ask me, that is a lot of money. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? And as a woman, she have seen Jesus. As Jesus stepped off and started to walk. And his entourage, his disciples, his students followed after him. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. As Jesus pressed through the crowd, there was this woman. She was sick for 12 years, having a bloody condition. Shall we praise the Lord Jesus Christ? She was having a bleeding condition. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ? But I want to tell you that if you are bleeding or if the church is bleeding, praise the Lord Jesus Christ that there is a bomb in Gilead. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. If there is a bleeding church, there is a healing Jesus. So as Jesus pressed through the crowd, praise the name of Jesus Christ, he felt something. He felt faith. He felt something that was out of the ordinary. He felt something touching the hem of his garment. A bleeding woman. A woman that needed sympathy. A woman that needed love. A woman that needed to be healed. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ. And as Jesus turned around and he, he saw her. He said woman. Thou art forgiven. And thou art healed. Oh the woman she worshipped from a wretched place. Oh the woman looked unto Jesus. And she said I must by means touch him. I must by means draw closer to him. I must by means, even though the crowd, the crowd may be thick, I must press my way through. For I heard the songman saying, I am pressing. I am pressing and I am pressing my way. I am on my way to glory. And if you should ask me, the woman saw the glory of God. Clothed in flesh. Clothed in the righteousness of God. A woman said, I must by means touch this glory. She pressed her way. She was on her way to glory. The woman was worshipping from a wretched place. From a hopeless place. From a sad place. From an unhappy place. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, I remember when Isaiah visited the king Ezekiah. And Isaiah told Ezekiah, This man, you're sick. And your days have, will be shortened. You shall see death. Oh God, if you should ask me, Ezekiah was in a wretched place. Oh, if you should ask me, he was in a place where he's unhappy. He was in a place where he was feeling so uncalled for, so cast down, so moody, so gloomy. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. When he heard the prophet said, listen, your day shall be cut short. Praise the name of Jesus Christ and you will not live for so long. The man worshipped from a wretched place. The man worshipped from an unhappy place. Even though where he was never felt like home mentally. But he worshipped. He worshipped. While he was in his sickness he worshipped. Is there a church would consider your situation? And you would say, admit the situation that I'm going through. I am going to worship. I am going to seek the face of God. I am going to call upon his name. It may feel like this is the last Sunday I'm going to come to church. But I'm going to get up. And I'm going to get dressed. And I'm going to get going. It may seem like this is the last time I will lift my hands and call upon the name of God. But I'm going to lift my hands anyhow. I'm going to command my hands to be lifted. I'm going to command my mouth to speak. I'm going to command my mouth to worship. Can we worship from a wretched place? Can we worship from an unhappy place? Shall we worship 
from a place where it doesn't seem like home oh yes David wept when he remembered the place of worship oh God take us back to the heart of worship take us from the heart of complacency take us dear Lord Jesus Christ from the heart which is not focused on you dear Lord Jesus Christ oh yes the church need to go back to that place even though we are wretched even though we may seem like we are unfortunate we shall worship worshiping from a wretched place praising God from a place where he's unhappy I may be sad David said oh my soul why art thou cast down but in another part of the psalm he said lift up thy heads O ye gates and be ye lifted up ye everlasting doors that the king of glory shall come in that who is this king of glory I see him seated high upon his mercy seat because the mercy seat is still in commission oh God there we wept when I remember my heart of worship for the wicked carries away captive my sickness carried me away captive my brothers and my sisters carried me away captive the cares of this world carried me away captive my money problems carried me away captive me being unemployed carried me away captive I just lost a family member and it seemed to carry me away captive but throughout this situation God required of me a song how can I sing in a strange land God this place in my mind doesn't seem like home this place in my mind doesn't seem like my comfort spot this place in my mind it doesn't seem where I'm comfortable how can you require of me a song my situation carried me away captive but despite my situation despite of the wretched man that I am I will sing unto the Lord a new song I shall play skillfully upon the harp oh God even though my situation carried me away captive when thou said seek in my face my heart said thy face oh God will I seek even though my situation carried me away captive and it seemed to have me in imprisonment I will lift up mine eyes to the hills from whence cometh my help even though my situation carried me away captive and you require of me a song I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth even though my situation may carry me away captive I will remember thy mercy seat oh God even though my situation carried me away captive oh God even though my situation carries me away captive Hallelujah. I will bless thee O oh Lord I will bless thee O oh Lord and with an heart of thanksgiving I will bless thee O oh God even though my situation may carry me away captive I will say the heavens declare thy glory I will still sing praises and the firmaments declare thine handiwork. Oh God, even though sickness may carry me away captive. 
I will still sing unto you, Jesus. I will still seek your face. Oh, whatsoever situation may carry you away captive. Jesus paid it all. All to him, I hope. Isaiah saw him and said, Who is this God coming from Edom with thy garments from Bosra? Praise the name of Jesus Christ. He saw him in another situation. He said, Lo, I come in the volume of the book, and it is written of me, O oh God, to do thy work. The work that God has given unto Jesus is that he was calling man back unto a place of worship. He was calling man back unto a place of fellowship. He was calling man back to a place where him and them will be one. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus Christ? Therefore Paul says in Corinthians, he says, to wit that God was in Christ Jesus and that he was reconciling the world back unto himself. He was reconciling the wretched man, the hopeless man, the sinful man, the man that just got there, got shoot a man, the man that just got commit murder, the man that just, praise the Lord Jesus Christ, got commit rape. He was reconciling the world unto himself. The man that is out there dying of hunger. The man that was out there dying of sickness. The mercy seat of God. We must go through something. But while we are wretched and while we are hopeless, we must remember that God is calling us back. To a heart of worship. The prodigal son. He left from his father's house. Thinking turned big man. He take his part of the portion. And he went out. And he wasted it. Fighting pigs for their food. If you ask me. He was a wretched man. If you ask me, he was an unhappy man. Because he realized he left the presence of his father. He was in a wretched place. And according to the customs of the Jew, the swines were seen as unclean. And he was out there feeding an unclean thing. And eating something that an unclean creature is eating. If you ask me, that man put himself in an unfortunate state. Oh yes. But he found back the heart of worship. Yes and the father's arm was wide open. The song man says here I am God. Arms wide open. Pouring out my heart unto you. I've been gracefully broken. Yes Lord it's me. It's me, Jesus. It's me. Oh, I am a wretched man. And I must by means find back the heart of worship. Oh, I'm going through my situation. And it may have carried me away captive. But I must remain at the heart of worship. The heart of worship. The mercy seat. And the heart of worship. The mercy seat. Had given us a heart to worship him. For what shall I render unto God? For all his goodness, I will take up my cup and I will call upon the name of the Lord because of his mercy seat. Oh, Jesus, he has been so good to me. Understand what David said. What shall I render? unto the Lord for all he said I will take up the cup of salvation because of his mercy I will take up the cup of salvation I will take up my worship and I will call upon the name of the Lord yes Lord Jesus 
Help us to go back to the heart of worship. Help us whatsoever situation that may carry us away captive. That we will remain at the heart of worship. Is there anyone today that wants to go back to that place of worship? Your situation may have carried you away captive. And you murmur. And you mumble and you grumble against God. But the mercy seat is still open. Vision yourself seeing the priest sprinkling the blood upon the mercy seat for your own atonement, for your own moving away or washing away of your sin. You may have committed a sin. Do not backslide out of the church. Because of the guilt in your heart. Even the church. Will may not hug you up. But we will tell you that yes you are wrong. But there is still hope. The mercy seat is still working. Mercy Jesus. You may have done something wrong. You feel guilty of it. Let not your guilt carry you away captive outside of the place of worship. Oh Jesus, for the wicked carry us away captive. Oh Jesus, but now you require from us a song. You require from us, Lord Jesus Christ, to come back to the place of worship. For this is your purpose that you come through the volume of the book so that you will reconcile man back to yourself. And if you are watching, it doesn't matter how far in sin that you have traveled, the mercy seat still works. You may be a backslider. The mercy seat still works. You may be a sinner. But the mercy seat still works. You may have not been doing so well in the church. And you feel as if all hope is lost. And you would want to leave the church. Remember. Jesus paid it all for us. Jesus see the, the tears that you will cry. He see the agony that you will be going through. He see the burden that you will have to face. So therefore Reverend Barnes penned the song said I wrote to tell you for your tears I died. For your seat, I've established a better mercy seat. Don't leave the church. If you are in the world, don't go out no further out in the world. The epistle of Jane says, draw close to God and he will draw close to you. Come back to the heart of worship come back to the heart of worship even if you are in your wretched place you can worship from that wretched place you can worship in that unhappy state in that gloomy state you can still worship there is hope for you Come from the loathsome ways of sin. Hide you in the blood of Jesus. Come under the blood. Come under the blood. Come under the blood. Hide you in the blood of Jesus. Hide you in the blood of Jesus. The mercy seat 
the blood was splashed upon the mercy seat oh yes it was for your atoning it was for the washing away of your sin the few persons that are here can we all stand oh God thank you Jesus Hallelujah. come from the loathsome ways of sin Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, get your worship on. Get your It shall continue. I, Jesus, Hallelujah. to be in my mouth. Thank you, Jesus. The humble shall hear thereof, and they shall be glad. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Glory to God. The heart of worship, Jesus. We wrote my life. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We wrote my glory, glory. Life. glory, 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 glory. Have fallen. Just imagine the priest sprinkling the blood upon the mercy seat. But we know how an high priest, his name is Jesus. And for every blood that was shed was for us. Shall we bless the Lord Jesus? Mercy. Yes, Lord. We rewrote my life. Mercy rewrote my life. Have fallen, my soul has away, but God's mercy. in the book of Revelation unto a specific church and he said to the church he said be watchful and strengthen the things which remains that are ready to die tell yourself today that I won't allow my worship to die I won't allow my life to die I won't allow my ministry to die because the mercy seat of God because God is still dispensing mercy unto man 
be watchful. Do not leave the church because you feel as if you don't fit in. As if you feel like this is not the place for you. I will tell you that this is not the time for you to leave the church. I will tell you that anytime you step from under the blood, it would be sudden destruction. Stay under the blood where the devil cannot do you no harm. Stay in your place of worship. Oh yes, the Hebrew boys plan to stay in their place of worship. And God protected them. Stay in your place of worship. And deliverance will come true for you. A breakthrough will come true for you. Whatever it is that you desire, it will come true for you. David said, set your affections unto God and he shall give you the desire of your heart. In other words, set your mind and worship and the thing that you desire, God will surely bring it to pass. Shall we praise the Lord Jesus? Speak to God. Even for those who are at the altar. Speak to God. Ask him to help you. Sometimes I have to say God help me. Help me Jesus. Jesus help me. Help me. Help me. Help me. I need your help. Sometimes that is just my prayer. Because there is an enemy trying to take me away. From the heart of worship. Yes, yes, you shall not die, but you shall live and declare the works of God. Hezekiah did not die, but he lived. And he has seen new things. Bow your heads everywhere, bow your heads everywhere. Oh, Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, Lord. Marinate our soul, Lord Jesus. Marinate our hearts like chicken. Yes, Lord Jesus. Season our hearts with worship. Season our soul with your grace, O oh Father. So that we'll sustain and maintain a life of worship, God. Look on the desire and the heart of your people. You see the struggle that we are going through. You see the pressure that your people are going through. You know that many of us are not having it easy. And many of us, Lord Jesus Christ, feel as though we would have backed out of this race. Lord Jesus Christ, which you have encouraged us to maintain with patience. Lord Jesus Christ, some of us feel like we would have just backed out. But God, as you sent your word, Jesus Christ, as many of us would have found our place. Lord Jesus Christ. Our hearts and our soul in a wretched place. In an unhappy place. In a gloomy place. In a place of sickness. In a place of poverty. In a place of depression and anxiety. Lord Jesus Christ you have sent your word oh father. To tell us that, oh Father, we should maintain the heart of worship. Whatsoever may be the case that we're going through. Oh God, when we want to thank you, Jesus. Lord Jesus Christ, as Paul would say, that your grace is sufficient. You are telling us today, oh God, if we maintain the life of worship, your grace is sufficient to keep us. Oh God, as your people are at the altar, Jesus Christ, as our faces are different, so are our conditions and situations. But God, I heard the song man says, How marvelous the grace which caught my fallen soul. For you look behind our faults and you see our needs. 
God, we pray and we ask of you to do just that this afternoon. Look behind our faults, oh God. For our faults are many. Our mistakes and our iniquities are many. But this is the purpose, oh God, for your mercy seat. For we could not present, oh God, ourselves unto you anyway. But God, you have given us your mercy seat so that, oh God, we will be forgiven of our sins and our iniquity. So therefore, oh God, your word said that we must now come boldly before your throne. Because we are now guiltless. Because our sins are now washed away. Remember your people, Jesus. As you wash away their sins even at this moment. Jesus Christ, give an open ears, oh God, unto our prayer. Because your mercy seat has attuned our sin. Give an outstretched arm, Lord Jesus. Because we are now clean through the word. And through the shedding of your blood. Oh yes God give us that vaccine. The vaccine of your blood. Jesus Christ for your blood which. Lord Jesus Christ it has created that eternal vaccine against sin. Yes God vaccinate us this afternoon. Oh yes God vaccinate us. Vaccinate us, Lord Jesus, straight from the throne of mercy. Blot out our transgressions and our iniquity. Purge us, O oh God, with high sum. For against thee and thee only have we have sinned. O oh Jesus, just as the man with the palsy, the Bible said that he came unto you worshiping. And after he worshiped, he made his request known unto you. So as we worship you this afternoon, God, we are now making our requests known unto you. Let it be, O oh God. Oh Jesus, let it be, Jesus. Hear the cry of your people. Have compassion upon us, Jesus. Remember those who are weak and are about for whatsoever reason to walk outside of this church door. You have sent this message unto them that your mercy seat is still in commission. Oh Jesus Christ, thank you for a timely word. Thank you for giving me and here to listen to let me know, oh Father that your blood still works and that your mercy seat still works thank you for preaching to me Jesus for those seers and knows that I needed this message and your people which are at the altar needed this message we beg of you Jesus do do God we beg you don't let us leave from this place of worship without our requests being made known unto you and when we made that request oh father answer Lord for we are now clean in the name of Jesus Christ we pray we pray we pray amen thank you Jesus 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 to worship you I live yes Lord Jesus yes Lord Jesus yes Lord Jesus yes Lord where would I be if you left me now yes Jesus yes Jesus now may the saving grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ Rest, remain, and abide with us all, now and forevermore. May all God's people say, Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory.
Thank you for viewing our live stream. Surely, the power of God has moved mightily among us today. We invite you to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel and our Facebook page. You may also help us to spread the word of the gospel by sharing this stream on your social media pages. Until we meet again, keep sweet, keep safe, and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you always. Amen. Cause you must be first in my life. I call.